Welcome to Dominion Conference, the last service, Sunday night. We are going to celebrate Canada, and I think we forgot to mention this morning to wear red, but I see some people did anyway. And I did. How many like the red that I'm wearing, okay? What? <laughs> How many like the red I'm wearing? Oh, there you go. That sounds better. We're going to have a great night. Sammy is preaching, of course. And uh, we're just going to have a great time here. I'll tell you what, it's just been such a good conference. People have been asking me, what was the offering on Saturday? Well, let me just tell you. Uh, just put it in, it's Saturday's offerings alone are over 50,000. And I'll tell you what, one of our best Dominion conferences was 2015. We did it in Calgary. And for the entire conference, the offerings were 50. So that gives you some perspective. Yeah, so, and I'll tell you what, this total goes quite a bit higher because we have other services. And I'm not counting the church offering because people tithe and give to the church, right? So it's been amazing. And some, I'm not making the conference about money, but I will tell you this. When everything's going right and God's moving and there's breakthrough, it's reflected in the giving too. But I will tell you this. When God sees the giving it does something else. It releases an open heaven. So you got this cycle, if you will. And so everybody just give the Lord a good praise offering for what he's doing. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure when we get the final numbers, they'll be a lot higher. So, but I just don't have that. It'll take a while to get those processed. But anyway, we are just blessed. And let me just say, it's good timing. It's really good timing. But there's been a sense of breakthrough, and we're just uh, really excited. And like I said, our ministry guest tonight, Sammy, you know, Sammy, you're just uh, such a blessing. We just appreciate it. Uh, you know, we'll let you go back to Edmonton, but reluctantly, okay? <laughs> anyway, it's going to be a good night. Now, we're going to start with a special video it's called God Keep Our Land. I want you to watch it. It's really inspirational. And I'm going to ask the team just to come up and be ready, Ben and the team, and just let's go for it as soon as the video is over. Watch this.
Please rise for the singing of Canada's national anthem. Shout to the Lord, come on. Amen. You guys ready? The Lord's done some amazing things. This morning, the worship team was really fantastic. Who was here this morning? They played some great songs that I haven't heard for some time. And I was like, I like those songs. And I was like, I felt like the Lord actually said, You got to play Days of Elijah. And as we started playing it earlier, as I started singing the second verse, because I forgot what it was, it's like right in line with what Bill's been talking about, the fields as wide as the harvest. So you guys ready to just worship the Lord and honor Him and thank Him for that? Okay, let's go. Dry bones becoming as flesh, and these 
shining like the sun at the trumpet call so lift so lift your voice it's the year of jubilee Jesus is powerful. The name of Jesus breaks every curse. The name of Jesus is healing. The same power that raised Christ from the dead 2,000 years ago is here in the room tonight. that's true who believes that's true yeah. <laughs> I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus Speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus, your name. Your name is power. Your name is your name is life right here right now break every stronghold shine through the shadows burn like a fire i just want to speak i just want to speak the name of jesus over fear over fear and all
started singing that I sensed the Holy Spirit fall on me and say we are doing something that is breaking strongholds over every person's life here yeah, come on. not just not just corporately not just over the nation that's true but I felt the Lord say tell the people they need to engage in this yes. because you're breaking assignments you're breaking poverty sickness you're breaking depression you're breaking assignments and weapons that are formed against you and over your household and I just coming up here to stir you up so that we're going to do this again Ben and when you say speak Jesus I want you to release Release it. Release it because some of you are fighting battles and this is your victory. This is the victory over your battle. Let's go and do it. Here we go. Don't let the worship team do it for you. Let your voice be the thing that declares this. Ready? Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets and Jesus in the darkness over Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the street. 
in this moment, every time I look at those words there and I see your name is life, there is something alive about declaring that in this moment. So I'm just going to say some of you in this room feel like there are things that are dead in your life. There are things that have died and you've watched them lay on the ground and you've said, actually, for sure, I know that thing's dead. Here in this moment, in this room, we're going to declare that word life together. And I want you to believe that your words aren't just coming out of your mouth, but things are changing as you say this word. I want you to believe that. I want you to believe that if you open up and start declaring life, you're going to see those dead things come back to life. Not in two weeks, not in a month, not on Wednesday, right here, right now, in this moment. Are you with me? So here we go. Life, life. feel something there? Wow. (laughs) Did you just say I actually did? Yeah, amen. Wow. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Just say it one more time. Life. Look at that dead thing right now. Look at it and say life. Life. One more time. Look at it. Say life. 
Oh, so God, for all your goodness. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. Oh, my days, I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up till I lay my head, I will see of the goodness of God. Again, I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. Thank you, Lord. In all my days, I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up till I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness. All my life, and all my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I just want to say this. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. Oh, man. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down.
thank you for your grace. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your grace. Oh, I thank you for your goodness. And I thank you for your grace. You're never going to let. And I say, you're never going to let. Never gonna let me down. Oh, I thank you. Oh, I thank you for your goodness. Yeah, yeah. I thank you for your grace. Oh, I thank you for your goodness. Yes, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your goodness. Oh, I thank you. You're never gonna let. So I say, you're never gonna let. You're never gonna let. Let us become more 
worship tonight and you say I didn't feel anything because that's maybe you because you didn't enter in but I will tell you this or two or three are gathered in his name he's there in the midst of them and if you take that by faith and enter in you're going to feel his presence but I felt the Lord say this in his presence is fullness of joy at his right hand what pleasures forevermore I just felt the Lord say he's going to touch people here tonight. There's people that have been carrying anxiety or heaviness or burdens, and God wants to lift them. You say, well, I, I, I don't know. Is, did he solve the problem? No. No, you know what? He doesn't have to solve the problem to take away the oppression. Because he's, he's king of kings, the Lord of all. He can take the oppression. And then your mind can be clear. So just... Put your hand up. You need to receive something. Maybe you've just been sensing opposition or oppression. I just want to release peace, liberty in His presence. The fullness of the gifts of the Spirit, which is peace, joy, love, kindness, self-control. And I release it in this house now for everyone. Maybe you're one that's struggled with ulcers. You have had that anxiety. I just felt Lord was dealing with anxiety in this room as we were worshiping. Just lifting it off. And you know why? He's in control. When you give your life to Him, He's in control. Amen? He is in charge. And if you make Him Lord, when the problems come, you can say, Lord, since I made you Lord over my life, that's your problem, not mine. <laughs> Isn't that good? Isn't that great to be able to say, Lord, this is not my problem, this is your problem. 
because I've given my life to you. I've surrendered myself to you. Lord, I release this in this hour. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God, that you're such a good, good God. Such a good, good Father. And I speak life and peace and health and grace and joy over everyone here. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. How many enjoy and appreciate this Spruce Grove worship team? Yeah, you guys are amazing. You do run the risk when you come down here that we'll kidnap you and keep you, but you know, we have let them go every year. <laughs> it's gonna be an awesome night. We've got some good things planned. And uh, you know, tonight, uh, uh, we've got Bill who will share the offering in a moment. And of course, you know, uh, Sammy has just been phenomenal. And uh, I just see him operating in a level of the prophet like very few people do. And Joan and I have been recipients of that. We just have, sometimes we have him up uh, on our TV program and then we'll go for lunch and he'll just start speaking things and, his, and, and we'll look at each other and says, he doesn't know anything about this, but he's just declaring it. And uh, it's just been real rich to see that. All weekend, how many have really received this weekend? <clears throat> yeah, wouldn't you give the Lord a good hand of praise for that? I just want to mention the tables again, but let me just draw attention to this uh, Canada-Israel pin that we have here. We've been giving this out to anybody that supports the program, Lifeline Today, which is uh, part of the ministry of Dominion Broadcasting. So uh, if you uh, want to get one of these pins, a $20 donation, and you say, well, I could buy the pin cheaper. Well, that's not the point. You're actually supporting the TV program, and, uh, and we'll give you this. But one of the things I just want to say is that we need to stand with Israel. We have the Israel flag there. More than ever, it's as if the spirit of the world has risen up against this nation and is distorting the actual narrative. You know, it wasn't Israel that started this fight. Uh, one of their prime ministers in, lived in the 70s, Golda Meir, she said this. She said, if... Uh, if the Arabs would lay down their arms, there would be peace. But if Israel would lay down their arms, there would be no Israel. And she said it accurately and correctly. Why is that? Because Israel represents Bible prophecy and Bible truth. And all of the spirit of this age wants to annihilate that and negate and say to the world, God doesn't exist. Well, he's wrong. They're wrong, and he's wrong. He's alive, and alive forevermore. So I just encourage you to do that, show your sport. I, I mentioned this morning we played a video. It was, uh, I was doing a video on Wellington Avenue in Ottawa, <clears throat> in front of St. Andrew's Church. And as I was doing the video, and we were talking about the destiny of Canada on the video and uh, addressing Dominion Conference, and then a Jewish rabbi went by, and I just finished the video, so I ran after him and just uh, stopped him abruptly. And I think he was kind of taken back about, what are you doing, you know? And uh, I just started telling him who I was and how we love the Jewish people and how we support Israel. And this ministry, Dominion Broadcasting, by the way, sends money every month to a ministry that feeds the poor. By the way, uh, the Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, has supported that same ministry, has actually volunteered with it, and they feed the poor, the, the Jewish people that come into the, the nation and immigrate in. And so it's, it's a real powerful ministry. So I just to encourage you with that. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, tonight, we're just going to ask Bill to come. How many enjoyed Bill? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wasn't that awesome? Yeah. God bless you, Bill. Uh, just come, and he's going to receive our offering. I like you. Yeah, Bill. You know, Aww. you're an awesome guy. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we, you know, Bill and, I, Bill and I say our wives just don't do this enough, so we'll text each other and say, you're amazing, you're, you're intelligent, genius, yes. you're ingenious, yeah. you're yeah. good-looking, you're so yeah. talented. And then he'll text back and outdo me, and then I'll have to outdo him. Well, I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> but Gwen doesn't think I'll ever grow up, so. Yeah, but, yeah Gwen, but, I've heard Gwen say that. Yeah, yeah, I, I have too, actually. <laughs> um, when they were singing Days of Elijah, the word Jubilee jumped out. Yeah. This is the year. Yeah. 
this is the year of Jubilee. And I thought, does that mean between now and the end of the year? Or does it mean between now and next year? And God said, it doesn't matter. This is Jubilee. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I believe it. Well, that was, Amen. That was so good. Thank you for the worship. My goodness. Oh, wasn't that good? Wasn't that good? This has been really good. But it's going to get gooder. We watch. <laughs> I love last services. God saves the best to last, you know. And uh, uh, I don't drink alcohol. There. But I'm addicted to new wine. And it's so good. The more you get, the more you want. But here's the good thing. You feel better the day after, the morning after, than the night before. <laughs> it, um, so there you go. Um, let me just mention, first of all, the books. Um, we've got some books. Jacob's book, Timothy Generation. I just, I said to God, can you make it mandatory for every person, Christian in Canada, to read this? And he said, no. <laughs> but I, I tried. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? But he's going to help. Um, I can't say enough about this. It, it really is powerful. You need to read it. Uh, my generation needs to read it. Younger generation needs to read it. You need to get some for both generations. Um, and then the book on vision. Um, we did the last few years, this is the first year we haven't for several years, done a prime, a prime time uh, television special for Daystar right across Canada for July 1st. And uh, Last year, um, I really felt that we need to talk about vision. And, uh, and so as Jacob and I were talking, he said, why don't we tape it where you received the vision, which is 52 years ago now. So we went back to the campgrounds, Ottawa Valley Pentecostal Camp by the Muskrat Lake, and um, we taped the whole program there. And uh, so I started writing about vision, just preparing for the program, and I kept writing and writing and writing, and I thought, this is really good. And... Um, so then I thought, people need this. So we put it in a book form. It was so easy because it comes out of my heart. But it's to help you see your vision, your dream, your mission fulfilled in life. And so the day of frustration has to be over. And we want to help you. So that book is there. And Six Keys to Breakthrough and Healing because God wants you healed. He wants you well. It's his will for you to live abundant life now. Jesus paid for now. And, uh, you know, you watch, Canada is going to experience heaven on earth. Jesus said, every time you pray, pray that the kingdom will come here, and the will of God will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. Canada's going to be a Christian nation. Yes. Amen. Yes. Well, you know what? I don't, I don't know. I, I'd like to give these out. I'd like to give more out. I don't know. But we could just go crazy tonight. I, well, we, <laughs> we did that. Along. That song, all my life, you've been faithful. I said to Jacob, if anybody can say that, I can. Yeah. My word, the faithfulness of God. I'm so blessed. And to get to do what I get to do now, wow. Jacob, what do you want to do? You have a thought. <laughs> well, that's encouraging. You have a thought. Oh, you're leaving. <laughs> well... <laughs> When he leaves, I leave. Oh, that was it. That was your thought. <laughs> wow. And that's it? That's the end of your thought? I was thinking about giving up more, but that's okay. They can get them. Huh? Well, do it then. What's that? Well, I just, my thought was just give some more out. Now you have to figure it out. <laughs> Why, why not? Well, thank you. <laughs> he says, keep going. Well, that's the plan. <laughs> keep going. Uh, thank you, Dick and Joan, for inviting us. Um, we've had a great time. Jacob and I have had a wonderful time here. Got to spend time with three of my great-grandchildren this afternoon. And um, we didn't have a nice cream party. But I gave them money for an ice cream party. So it's going to be OK. They're, they're happy. And uh, <laughs> so. Um, just bless, 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 bless. I have been blessed. I've received. I've just been totally blessed with all of this. I just uh, waiting to see what Jacob's going to do here. He's going to do something. Okay. Okay. 
do it. Okay. He's coming up. They're coming. Oh, there's a whole bunch of them coming up. Well, what about all the people over here? Everybody's over. Come on. Oh, you're worried. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's fun, isn't it? Great, that's it, <laughs> done. I met a couple. <laughs> wow. See, you did that and they clap. The crowd's going wild for you, isn't that? <laughs> I met a couple last night, I think it was last night, um, from Manitoba. Are you both here? Come here, come here for a minute. Now, I know I can't come all the way down because of lights and things, but I can't, can I come down this far? Yeah. Okay. Now, these folks have come from Manitoba. Now, this... Hi. <laughs> now, you're from... Fisher Branch, Manitoba. Fisher Branch? How many have been there? <laughs> one, one, two, wow. Um, now you said you had um, registered to come to Timothy Conference in Toronto. That's right. And that would have been great. We had a great time. We went ahead without you, by the way, but, <laughs> but would have been great that you would have come because people came from all over Canada, but why didn't you come? We hadn't finished seeding. It was too wet. We farm. They're farmers. Can I come down one more step or no? Okay. There. I did feel taller up there. Don't you? Um, so you're farmers and you had planned to come, but you were delayed in sowing because of the rain. So you had. A, so let me just ask you a question because I, I don't know much about farming. If you had said, okay, we're not going to sow seed. We're just going to go to Timothy, and then we're going to pray, God, give us a great harvest. How would that work? Not. Yeah, it wouldn't work, would it? No. Because there are people in the body of Jesus that they don't sow seed, and they just keep waiting for harvest and wonder why harvest doesn't come. So how, how, how much, uh, how big is your farm? Uh, 1,200 acres. 1,200 acres. So you sowed a lot of seed. Yes, half, half this year. And and when when is harvest time? September. 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 When would harvest time be if you didn't sow? <laughs> it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be. Good. You just preached for me. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you came here. Because so you, you sowed your seed, then you came here because you couldn't get to Toronto. I'm glad you came. Thank you. God bless you. From what's the name of the place again? Fisher Branch. Fisher Branch. Is there, is there a church there? Uh, we go to Arburg, Manitoba. That's how, many, how many have ever been there? Oh, really? Wow. Well, wow. Wow, that's wonderful. We bring greetings from Kobe and Annie Weeb. Whoever, some of you may know them, we go to the same church. Oh, wonderful. They, so you're, you're, thank you. I'm glad you came. Bless you. <laughs> so... Do you see where this is going? Like if a farmer didn't sow seed but kept talking about expecting a harvest, we would say that farmer was stupid. <laughs> Wouldn't we? I mean, because you said, well, it doesn't work. But people do that because God's promise to bless you God's promise to meet your needs. And it's like Isaac. He was in the land during famine when most people were leaving and going to sow in someplace else. And God said, you stay there and I'm going to bless you. And the Bible says, Genesis 26, after he'd been there a long time, Nothing had happened. Isn't that something? God promised to bless them, and yet it probably was getting worse because he was in famine. And then he sowed. 
in a time of famine. And that same year, he reaped a hundredfold. He got so blessed that the ungodly were jealous. That's the will of God for you. It is God's will for you to have your bills paid. It's God's will for you to have your mortgages canceled, to have your vehicles taken care of, and have every, all the money to do whatever God tells you to do. Prosperity, as far as I can see in the Bible, is not having the biggest house, the biggest car. It's just having everything you need to be able to fulfill your dreams that God's given you. And you have the key to activate it. You have the key to activate it. Abraham, father of faith. God promised him. I mean, the guy is old. Now, I have talked to Gwen about having another baby. <laughs> and she just says, don't go there. And I, but I say, Abraham and Sarah. Well, no, no. And I said, but an angel came. And Sarah laughed. She said, I wouldn't laugh. I'd kill the angel. <laughs> well, now Gwen, Gwen is a purebred. She was born in Pentecostal, home raised in Pentecostal. I, I was Christian Anglican, brought up United, baptized in water in the Baptist. Then I got saved in the Pentecostal church at 18. So I'm a mongrel. But um, she's purebred. So she, she has helped me with my doctrine. Until this, I had to correct her. I said, no, no, you can't kill an angel. They don't die. She said, that one would die. <laughs> so was, that's not going to happen. But God promised that their seed, their children, their descendants, would be more than the stars of the sky or the sand on the seashore. And nothing happened. Nothing happened. And then they did what, what, you know, a lot of us have done. Well, let's help God. And Sarah had this amazing idea. Why don't you, why don't you sleep with that young maid of mine? And he says, okay. And then she gets mad at him afterwards, of course. <laughs> and so they had a child, but that, that wasn't it. And so they actually, Sarah conceived when she was about 90 and had a baby when he was almost 100. And they had one. And he was a miracle child. It wasn't what God promised, but it was better than nothing. And many of you have received something from God. And it's not what you promise. God's promised big things. If it's not big, if it's not impossible, if it's not ridiculous, if it's not something that you, you couldn't do, possibly happen on your own, then it's not God. He's big. He thinks big. He talks big. He gives you big dreams. But many times we settle. Well, one's better than none. He's a miracle. And then God said, okay, you got to do something. That son that you love, that only son that you love so much, take that which is most precious to you and sacrifice him. You know, the thing about Abraham, there's so many things I love, but the one thing I love is he didn't go asking people, what do you think about this? And if he'd asked 10 people, he'd get 10 different answers, but many of them would have said, that's not God. I mean, God wouldn't give you this miracle and then ask you to kill him. So he didn't talk to anybody. Early the next morning, he gets up with his boy and goes, takes off. And you know the story. He was he's actually ready to sacrifice his son. Somehow, not understanding, but understanding, God's going to keep his promise somehow. And God provided a ram in the thicket, but after the sacrifice that he was going to offer, God said, because you did not withhold that which was most precious to you, now I'm going to bless you. And it just happened. And now, <laughs> you can't number the Jewish people. They're everywhere. Thank God. Thank God. He had the key. Some of you need to understand this. That God doesn't want you to live in frustration. And he doesn't want you to settle. 
but you have your part. Every miracle is two parts, our part and God's part. God will not do your part, and you can't do God's part. But it comes down to giving. It comes down to sowing. Please don't expect a great harvest if you don't sow a lot of seed. Significant seed in sowing brings significant harvest. And this is the last night of the conference, and we're not sowing to meet the needs. You've heard that. We're sowing for your destiny, and we're sowing into the future of this ministry. We're sowing into the future of Canada. And you might say, well, I've already given. Well, I just dare you to obey God tonight. God's been speaking to me when we were singing the one song about family. We're believing for some big miracles for some of them in our family right now. And God said, you need to sow. You need to sow. If you want to harvest for your family, sow for your family. Sow on purpose. We don't just randomly sow seeds. These precious people from Manitoba, they didn't just get the seed and just throw anywhere. They prepared the soil. They made sure the soil was good. They made sure that it was, the rain was over. And then they sowed in good soil. And they know they're going to get a harvest. So you've got envelopes in front of you. You can give by all of these ways dickandjoan.com. You can give cash. And since this is the last night, I would think, if it's okay with you, well, it's, we're going to do it anyway. We'll even accept American money tonight. Okay? Yeah, okay. So cash or check. Um, you can give by credit, debit at the back. You can do e-transfer, info at dickandjoan.com. But I just think that tonight is a very important night for you, for your destiny, for what you're believing God for. I feel it is for me. Our ministry is already given significantly in this, this uh, conference. My wife and I have already given, but tonight I felt God say, okay, now you need to sow for your family. And I'm telling you, the same year, I'm expecting big miracles. Big, big miracles. Big miracles. So, Father, thank you. Thank you tonight. For a miracle offering that as we sow, we'll reap, as we give, is coming back, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And we thank you that we live in a day when we don't have to wait a long time. But the one who sows and the one who reaps is in the same field. That many times, even as we're sowing, we're reaping. That many times, as we even sow tonight, miracles are going to happen in the lives of those that we're sowing on purpose for. We believe your word. And we believe your promises, and we won't settle for anything less than exactly what you promised. So God, be pleased. May this offering bring joy to you. You've been blessing us all weekend. May we bless you tonight. You've been making us happy. May we bring joy and happiness to you tonight. We know that this was important. When Jesus was on earth, he stood right watching what people gave. So thank you that we can bless you tonight. We give an offering, not to Dick and Joan, not to this ministry. We give an offering to you. We honor you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Are you ready to give? If you're not ready, say, okay. <laughs> Go ahead and receive. And there's a wonderful video that you're going to watch while you're giving tonight.
the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of God. Now is the time to rise. This is the hour. Sing out to you, Almighty One. Stretch out your arm, establish your reign. Hear your people call again and again. Take this nation, move through the land, rule in righteousness by your hand. Hear what we say, see what. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
You probably noticed that was uh, written and performed by our, our son-in-law, Ryan Caldwell, and Alyssa is our daughter. And, uh, you know, I've seen it many times, but I can't help but being moved every time I see it. And I just sense there's something fresh about the prophetic declaration about Canada will be saved. I believe Canada has been reserved by God for a specific purpose in the times that we're living in. He shall speak peace to the nations, it says in scripture, and I believe Canada's a nation to be used to speak the shalom of God to the nations of the earth. Yeah, that's why everything's trying to take our nation out of destiny. Um, I just want to say hello to Jim Wiley and your wife right there. It uh, just came to mind when the couple here from Manitoba, you're originally from Manitoba and you live in uh, Calgary now. But the reason I want to say that <clears throat> is Joan and I went to Manitoba to do a, a preaching engage engagement at a camp they ran. It's called Rock Lake Camp down in the southwestern part of uh, Manitoba. And uh, it's an amazing camp. They have every year this just goes uh, full, just right straight. And all these people come and they just experience revival. So anyway, we were going out, so we flew to Winnipeg, got in the vehicle, and as soon as we got in the vehicle, I got in the vehicle off the plane, Joan and I, and we're driving. Immediately, my phone goes, the text goes, and I received a text. This was in July of 2016. I received a text and said, they've approved your purchase or your acquisition of this building. And so that was the official day approval when we came to the camp we said it happened we've got this building now just so you know to put that together we then developed it it was gutted and we developed it we've been in here for six years leasing and then last year uh, November 30th the miracle took place and we bought it and I just wanted to mention that Jim that was you were one of the first to hear that right do you remember that so give the Lord a good hand so we've been absolutely blessed with Sammy. I just think it's just, I've seen you go up levels, and I would say you are a prophet. You just, absolute accuracy in his ministry, and I just have an expectation that God's going to really impart to you tonight. Come on up, and just uh, let's give him a really good warm welcome. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Can we give Jesus a shout of praise in this place? Um, there's a unique atmosphere here tonight. It's going to be a good night. Um, I got Ben up here because I said I want some keys tonight. Because how do we know when a prophetic person gets a little background music, it goes up 10x. But you know what? You know what the atmosphere is here today? It's peace. How many believe we need peace in our nation? You know, I believe one of the things the Lord spoke to me tonight was we're about to learn about the weapon of peace in this season. You know, the Bible says, Paul told the church, he said, and the God of peace will soon crush Satan underneath your feet. I'm going to say amen. amen. And tonight, you know, last night we released a word and I feel like tonight we've broken through. How many, how many feel like tonight, tonight, not just a breakthrough, but tonight, tonight, you're going to receive something fresh from the Lord. Amen. And it's, it's here in this room. I, I just feel it. You know, David said this, I, I search for my enemy, but I I can't find him. How many would love to step into this next season? Just like David said, I, I look for my enemy and I can't find him. How many believe God wants to remove your enemies tonight? Or all of a sudden sickness is no longer a part of your life tonight. Cancer has to go. This is what the Lord told me. He said, cancer is going to go tonight in the name of Jesus. How many say Amen. But I want to do something. I can feel it. There's creative miracles in the room tonight. But before we pray, 
before we minister, God's going to heal people tonight. We're going to see wild stuff. I'm telling you, tonight, God's going to move the way that only he can move. Acts 10, 38 says this. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. How many believe today that God still has power? The Bible says that he went about doing good and healing all. Say all. I learned this from Bill. You know what all means? All. That's fascinating. Heavy revy, Bill. Tonight, could we believe right here in your seat? How many know Jesus already knows what you need before you ask? And he has the power to release it tonight. And that power comes through the working of the Holy Spirit. And how many know the Holy Spirit is on the earth today? And the ruling and reigning spirit over Lethbridge, over Alberta, over Canada is not a demonic principality. The ruling, reigning spirit is the Holy Spirit. And he's in the room tonight. And he wants to touch you. He wants to heal you. The Lord told me, he said, I'm going to break curses tonight. Some of you, you have chronic pain. And you've been like, God, why haven't I received healing? Actually, God wants to remove a curse. And you're going to experience healing in your body. There's people in this room, you're standing in proxy for people. God's going to move in miracles for loved ones, even as you're in your seat tonight. How many believe we're going to see miracles like that in this season? You know, I'm reminded, I, I got to share, I want to build faith. You know, Bill, when you were... Um, both Bill and, and Jacob were with me in uh, our conference in Edmonton. We had Chris Fallatin. It was awesome. Uh, our favorite service, I got to say. I love, hey, Chris, if you do see this, love you. Best service, hands down, Bill Prankert. I'm just saying, hands down. Laid hands on everybody. I had a ton of conservative ministers that were there. They got so rocked with the Holy Ghost. I, I'm talking guys that like three-piece suit, like never felt nothing. I mean, got rocked by God, phoning me, laughing on the phone. And I'm like, who is this? I couldn't believe it. It was them. I'm like, did you, you know, did you steal their phone? They're like, no, I got rocked. This guy, Bill Pranker, prayed for me, and I felt the, the Holy Ghost. How about it be if the Holy Ghost still moves in power? But I want to share this. I was in a service. Joan, I was in a service just like this. And I was moving in ministry, just like what we're going to do in a moment. And all of a sudden, I'm in the room, but the Holy Spirit literally takes me into a hospital room. I know I'm in a service, but he brings me to another place. And I'm standing over a gentleman that is fighting for his life. He has an oxygen mask on, and I can see all the machines and I'm aware that this man needs a creative miracle or he's going to die. And I look at this man and I could feel the power of the Holy Ghost. And as I'm preaching, I'm sharing this. I, from in the meeting, I said, I know I'm here in this service, but God has showed me somebody that your dad is in a hospital room fighting for his life. I see the oxygen mask. I see you hooked up. Right now, God's going to heal you. And when I said that, I saw myself laying hands on this guy. And it was like power emanated through my hands. This guy comes out of a coma and looks at me. And I know he sees me. And I come back into the service, and I know God just healed him. Are you ready for this? When you were with us in Edmonton, we got a knock on the Saturday night after the service, and this family comes in. This daughter, her two kids, and this older gentleman. I'm looking at the older gentleman. I'm like, I have seen you before big smile on his face and his daughter says Sammy I want to introduce you to somebody this is my dad who you were prophesying about healing in the hospital room fighting for his life and he said he was on that bed in the power of the Holy Spirit went through his body and he opens up his eyes 
And that man looks at me and says, sir, I've met you before. I said, really? He says, I saw you in my room. And then you disappeared. He says, I want to shake your hand. And I said, no, no, I want to shake your hand. You know what the coolest part was? Those two kids never gave their life to Jesus. But when they saw their grandpa receive a creative miracle, they said, Mom, we want to give our lives to the Lord. And I led those two kids to Jesus Christ. Come on, listen. I want to build faith. Because maybe, just maybe tonight, the miracle that you're believing for is actually going to be a chain reaction for family salvation. That you're not just breaking through, but your kids are going to break through, and your grandkids are going to break through, and you're about to see revival in your family. That tonight, through the power of the Holy Spirit, that God can do only what He can do. And tonight, God wants to turn you into a conduit of His goodness. I can feel it. It's here. Here's what the Lord told me. Before we pray, He said, Sammy, tonight, I want you to thank me before we pray, before the breakthrough, before the healing, before all these things, he said, I want you to step in by faith through thankfulness. Can we do that today? Just for a moment, before we do anything, when we were in worship today, I just, I was crying on the front row. I'm like, God, I just, I just want to spend a couple extra minutes tonight. I mean, oh, God's been so good to us. He's been so good to this nation and that God loves Canada. And he loves you tonight and he loves those that are watching online and he knows what you're going through. And he has the power to change every situation. Last time I checked, at the mention of his name, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that he is Lord. So before anything, Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for what you did over 2,000 years ago. Healing is not a work of the flesh. Healing was purchased by you, Jesus. Healing is a gift that you want to give to the body. So tonight, we say thank you for that gift. Tonight, maybe some of you, you've been believing God for 20 years. Lord, we thank you. Tonight is their night for a miracle. Tonight is their night for a breakthrough. I'm going to say amen. I'm going to move in some words of knowledge tonight. Then we're going to pray for healing. And then the Lord spoke to me. And um, he said he wants to give you a gift before you leave tonight. How many like gifts? Anybody here like gifts? My girls love gifts. Oh, my goodness. He's going to give you a gift tonight. And here's what the Lord said. Tonight's a night where he's releasing impartation, where he wants to give you something special tonight that you're gonna take home to your church, to your family, to your region. How many say amen? amen? All right, let's go. I'm, by the way, I'm just gonna preference something. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are not for our entertainment. They're to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. I want to encourage you today, as people are getting touched, can we give God glory just like it was our own breakthrough and celebrate someone else's breakthrough tonight? Can we do that? We're not called to move. This is not a spectator sport tonight. We want to encounter the glory tonight. How many say amen? amen. I'll tell you something. There's a, there's a woman in here tonight. You've had... Two, no, no, three major accidents. I believe they're all vehicle related. And the enemy tried to take you out a couple of times. I actually, I even feel like even before you were saved, the enemy tried to take you out. But there's still a residue of trauma in the body 
that God wants to heal tonight and you're in this place and there's been issues with your, your back, your neck, and even pain that sometimes goes down into the legs. God wants to heal you tonight. Who are you? If that's you, can you, can you, stand, can you stand up? I'm telling you, ma'am, you know what's wild? I was just going to prophesy over both you guys. Come on, God bless Manitoba. I was going to prophesy over you. This is a word you're taking this back home. Here's your word. No weapon formed against you will prosper. I see you praying that. I see you praying, no weapon formed against us will prosper in every tongue. Does this make sense to you? Every tongue that rises up against you will be condemned. I'm actually in, you're an intercessor, man, many, many times. You, you, you pray and decree in your home. I'm in your home. I'm in a moment right now. I'm in your home and I see you. There's times where it's like you get into this warrior prophetic and I see there's something with your foot. I don't know, you stomp with your foot, right? Yeah, you do, I see that. I'm in a moment right now. And I see this, you stomping, and every time you do, you're stomping on the enemy's neck in this season. And, and I'm telling you, God's gonna give you the neck of your enemies in this time. And there's a restoration coming in your body, but there's a restoration over both you guys because the enemy tried to steal from you in the last season. I see like, a th like three or four years ago, the enemy tried to come and rob you. God's releasing divine restoration. Does this make sense to you? God's releasing it now, and he's about to touch family members in this season right now, where God's gonna use you as a bridge for the Holy Spirit. I see those that have known about God, but they've never encountered him. They're about to get radically touched by the goodness and the glory of God in this season. Does that make sense? Yeah. So right now, for both of you, why don't you both lift your hands? This is, both, this is for both you guys. God's gonna turn your home into a home of glory right now. And, and ma'am, God's resetting bones in your body even now in the mighty name of Jesus. Something about right now, God's gonna touch the foot. He's healing the foot right now. I see it, God's realigning things. He's gonna heal right now. Lord, we thank you for your mighty power being released in the mighty name of Jesus. There it is, going through your body from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. We cancel every curse of the enemy right now and we command it to go back into the enemy's camp. And Lord, we thank you. Wow. Lord, like David said, I would have fainted had I not believed I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. God, you're going to see the glory of God in your region in this next season. And the walls are coming down. Father, we just bless them today now in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, how many say amen? Wow. Sure. Oh. Oh, what is this? Um, um, Whitaker, Whitmore, what is this? Okay, time out. I, I'm, I don't know if this is a street or, or something. Does Whitaker make sense to anyone? That's a wild, does that make sense? I don't know if it's like something like Whitaker. Who is that? Does that make sense? I kept, I kept seeing this name. It's like Whitaker or something like this. Who is this? Let me know if that makes sense. This is a big step. If not, I'm going to keep moving. But I just kept seeing that. I kept seeing that name. Does that make sense? Is that somewhere? I don't know if that's a, like a place or, or a street name. What is that? Really quickly. I want to wait. Lord, we just thank you right now in Jesus' name. Sometimes people come up to you afterwards, they're like, that's me. Don't do that tonight. <laughs> Why? Because there's an anointing right now in this place. Who is this? Does that, does that name make sense? It's like Whitaker or something. Does that make sense? Really quick. If not, I'm going to keep going. It could also, if it's you online too, let me know. Here's what I want to do. I'm going to keep moving. There's someone here that needs a miracle in the intestines and there's been an issue the only way I can describe it is it's there's um, like a leaking something about a leaking in the intestines God wants to heal you right now and there's been massive I'm talking like like severe pain God wants to remove that today who is that right now does that make sense with the intestines 
Say, you need a miracle in your intestines. Who is this? Where? Can you stand? Can you stand up, ma'am? Whoa. Just lift up your hands. Thank you, Lord. There it is. Wow. Lord, just release your glory from the top of her head to the soles of her feet right now. Wow. Lord, we just thank you for your presence. Wow. I just see the Lord right now. He's removing right now. It looks like like an arrow in the stomach. Lord, I thank you that's coming out right now in Jesus' name. God's going to, Lord, I thank you right now. I don't know if there was words spoken against you or something about God's going to restore in this season. And he's removing every lie of the enemy right now in Jesus' name, right now. And he's removing stuff right now. Every lie that's been over. Do you have any kids? God's going to touch the kids right now in Jesus' name. And I saw the enemy trying to use deception. God's going to break it off now. Does this make sense to you? Yeah. Lord, we thank you that that's being broken now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we just cut the head off that thing right now. Lord, where the enemies try to bring division, Lord, you're bringing restoration right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we speak over the stomach today. We command everything to come into alignment right now. And Lord, I thank you that she's going to come into the best sleep of her life right now in Jesus' name. Where there's been two to three hours of sleep, there's going to be a renewing of energy. Does that make sense for you? Yeah. I see you tossing and there's two to three hours. Lord, I thank you that that's shifting tonight, right now. Lord, from the, right now, Lord, from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Wow. Man, I don't know what this is. I keep stepping into moments. Is there like a chair that you sit with Jesus? Is there a place where you just sit with the Lord? I just see you sitting in a chair with Jesus. You have your Bible out and you have your hands out. Does that make sense to you? And I see it in the morning. I see times in the morning where the Lord meets with you. Yeah, and there's like a blanket of the presence of the Lord that comes over you. And you know what he's gonna do in this season? He's gonna give you kisses. The kisses of the Lord are coming over you right now. And he tells you you're his princess. And he tells you how much he loves you. This is the year where you're going to be like David. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Father, we release it now in Jesus' name. Come on, how many say amen? Wow. Whew. There's, there's such a realm of the supernatural peace of the Lord tonight. Whew. This is wild. It's so, it's so open prophetically here. Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing all over this room. Wow. You know, it's interesting. I'm, uh, how many know God knows where you live, amen? Yeah. Interesting. I, I'm in, I feel like the Lord's showing me someone's home and I'm stepping into their home and I'm going up a set of stairs. And when I go up the set of stairs, there's like a, there's a bedroom to the right. There's a, a bathroom. It's a little off to the left. And when you go down the hallway on the left, that's the master bedroom. And in the master bedroom, this is wild. Your bed is on the right side. There's like a little nook, bed on the right, a little nook on the other side. And I see like a, a chair that's right next to like a window that's there. And that's like a place where you spend time with the Lord. And I, and I just see the, the presence of the Lord coming over that place. And you're in a season even now of like, God, I'm in transition. I'm in a season where it's like, I need a word of the Lord. Who, does this make sense? Who are you? Does that, does that make sense to, your, to your, your room? Is that you? Can you stand? My gosh. Whew. Wow. I see the words. I keep seeing it transition. And you're stepping into a new season right now. Lift up your hands. Wow. The pain of the past is over, says the Lord. 
you walk through, I, I see this. David said this, yea, that I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You came through something in the last season. And I'm gonna tell you this right now, you're moving from glory to glory and from strength to strength right now in Jesus' name, that this is the year right now of stepping into the greater glory. This is the year where God's about to speak to you in dreams. Do you have a, a notebook? I see, do you dream already? I see you writing dreams and God's gonna start to give you directional dreams. And I'm seeing like, I, I'm seeing like a nightstand. I don't know if you put it in, but I, I see this right now where the Lord's about to speak to you this season, the word of the Lord, and that there's doors that are opening right now. Lord, I speak right now. The new doors are opening, that this is a new season, and there's no more delay in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you right now that this is the year of boldness for her and that you're stepping into, man, Woo, there it is. You're stepping into the blessing of the Father. You know what you're gonna get tonight? You're gonna get a Father's blessing tonight. This is my daughter in whom I'm well pleased. I don't know what, it, I just see the, I see the Father. There's something about this is the year of the revelation of the Father for you. And God's gonna do something amazing with the revelation of the Father. And Lord, I thank you for it right now. Lord, for the releasing of the Father's blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. Does that make sense for you? Come on, can we just give God praise? Lord, we release it. Whoa. Huh. Wow. What? Um, how many believe in the power of impartation? I'm a product of it. That's why I love Bill. Bill, I love you. I'm gonna tell you this right now. There's things that Bill has laid hands on, my, on me. It's changed my life. I mean it. And uh, I just wanna say this, Bill, we honor you here in Canada. We're so thankful for you and Jacob and everything that you carry. In a moment, I'm gonna pray for healing. God's gonna heal people all over this room. But I do have a message real quick and I wanna talk about the power of impartation. I'm gonna take 20 minutes. I'm a preacher, maybe 25. But I wanna tell you this tonight, you have more than what you think. And that you're leaving this place, I believe with an impartation that's gonna change you. And that when we lay hands on you, something's gonna to happen tonight. And I believe there's gonna be release of a powerful God encounter. How many say amen? Something changed in this room. I can feel it. Just, it's open. It's open, it's open, it's open, it's open. All over this room, it's open. There's a... There's someone here, you're... You're... I'll tell you what I'm seeing. I'm, I'm seeing a text message between you and your son your son has been working, I, I think, in the oil fields, and he's been battling some stuff. I feel like the enemies tried to attack his mind in the previous season. God wants to deliver him from all the mental attacks, and he wants to break off depression off of his life and confusion off of his life. And I see you texting, and you've been praying for him and interceding. Tonight's the night. I want to agree with you. That thing is going to go now in the name of Jesus. Who is that today, right now? Who is this? You have a son that's doing like some kind of work. Well, yes, can you stand? Come on, just lift up your hands. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for breakthrough right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you that every attack of the enemy over the mind right now is broken in Jesus' name. And Lord, we release right now, there's a deliverance over the mind. And God's breaking generational stuff off now in Jesus' name. There was attack against you in the mind too where the enemy tried to bring, I, I see this, when you were younger, 
Like the, the enemy tried to come and try to cut off this line. God's going to set this whole family line free in this season right now. That every negative voice is being silenced in this season. That God's releasing right now. Lord, I thank you for the word of the Lord that breaks off all depression, oppression in the mighty name of Jesus. Devil, get your hands off this family now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we release the blood of Jesus over the family now. Wow. And God's going to restore time back in this season. He's restoring time. I see it. Lord, I thank you. Lord, we just release it now in Jesus' name. Come on, how many say amen? I want to tell you, you could do this all night. so good. Why am I doing this? Because how many know if God knows exactly what's going on in your body, he knows exactly what's going on in your situation. How many believe he can touch you right here and right now? You know why we're doing this? Because people need to know God's in the room tonight. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to see healing take place all over this room. I've seen you do this many times, Bill. You actually laid hands on me. And I started operating in this. And I started seeing a greater increase of miracle signs and wonders. Why? Because when you have a revelation of Jesus the healer, it changes your life. Can I say this right now? God doesn't just want to heal your body. He wants you to start to see miracles everywhere that you go in this season. So if you need a miracle in your body, we could pray individually, but that'd take a long time. How many believe God can do it in mass? If that's you and you're saying, God, I need a miracle in my body right now. I want you to stand up all over this room. All over this room, quick, quick, quick. You know what's wild? Whew. Some of you are gonna see, not just you healed, you're gonna actually see those that you're standing in proxy healed right now in Jesus' name. Now, here's what I want you to do. Whoa. If you need a miracle in your body, put your hand on the part of your body where you need a miracle tonight. Now, some of you are like, Sammy, I got more issues than hands. Take your hand and put it on your head tonight. That's like, Jesus, give me the overhaul tonight. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to picture, not your hand. I want you to picture the hand of Jesus overlapping your hand. That nail scarred hand is coming over you right now. The one that overcame sickness, death, the grave, that hand is on you tonight. And Lord, I, I just see this right now all over this room. Lord, we thank you for your miracle working power. There's someone here God's healing ears tonight. If that's you, just put your hand there real quick. And, and, I, and I see ringing in the ears, just stopping now in Jesus' name. I speak to deafness right now. Deafness has to go now in Jesus' name. Right now. Lord, we thank you for eyes being healed tonight. Some of you need a miracle in your eyes. Lord, we thank you right now there's healing coming over the eyes. Sunspots have to go. Blurred vision, be healed now in Jesus' name. Lungs, some of you need a miracle in your lungs. Put your hand on your lungs today. Asthma has to go now in the mighty name of Jesus. Some of you gotta start taking a deep breath. There's healing right now, the effects. Some, there's somebody here with like, you've had like long-term this COVID thing going and you're like, man, I, I've lost my energy. I've lost my ability to breathe. There's healing now in Jesus' name. Heart issues today. Some of you, there's releasing of miracles in the heart. There's been generational heart disease. It's being healed now in Jesus' name. I, I see shoulders. 
Shoulders are being healed right now. There's a, there's a move right now. Just start to thank Lord. We just start to move the shoulder. Clicking in the shoulder stops. There's mobility coming back right now in Jesus' name. We speak all the pain has to go now in Jesus' name. Necks be healed now in Jesus' name. Whiplash right now. Be healed. Wow, I just see right there. Somebody here, the top of your, your, your back, like lower neck, the discs, there's like almost like a pinch nerve. Lord, we just thank you that that right now, those discs are just being healed. All the pain in the neck goes now, right now. Teeth be healed now in Jesus' name. Hips, there's those that have had issues in your hips. Childbirth, because of childbirth, I think see some ladies in here, you've had issues in your hips. I see the Lord straightening hips now. In Jesus' name, knees be healed today. Feet, some of you start to move your feet right now. There's some people that have had numbness in their feet. God's healing it now in Jesus' name. We speak healing right now. Stomach issues be healed in Jesus' name. Back issues be healed right now. Cancer has to go now in the mighty name of Jesus. Someone here, you've got skin cancer. God wants to heal you now in Jesus' name. Right now, Lord, I thank you for new skin. Somebody, you've got to put your hand. I see skin cancer. Put your hand on that part of your body. God wants to give you new skin right now. Lord, we thank you for healing right now in Jesus' name. Whew. Whoa, right now. Somebody here, breathing issues, like your, like your nose is being healed. Deviated septum. Lord, we thank you for healing now. Knee issues, somebody like ACL, MCL. Start to move your knees. There's a, right here, right here. Lord, we thank you for ankles being healed. Ankles, I just, just start to move your ankle. Lord, we thank you. Swelling in ankles has to go now in Jesus' name. Lord, we speak right now. Full mobility, pain has to go. Whoa. From the top of their head to the soles of their feet, we release your healing power. How many say amen? Here's what I want you to do real quick. Start to move your body. Move your body. I'm gonna use the words of Bill. Look for your miracle tonight. Start to move, start to thank, Lord, we just thank you right now that you're touching our bodies right now. Start to try something you couldn't do. How many know if I told you I just deposited a million dollars into your bank account, how many know you check your bank account? Check your body tonight. Look for your miracle. And if God's healing your body, the pain has left. You've got more mobility. Something's going on. Really quickly, really, really quickly. If God's touching your body, just wave at me like this. Come on, look at this right now, nice and high. Come on, look at this. All over the room, come on. Wow, thank you, Lord. Come on, can we give Jesus praise? All over the room. Whew. Thank you, Lord, for your miracle working power all over this room. At least like 40 hands all over this room. How many just say amen? amen? Really quickly tonight, here's what the Lord said. Is this, I, I wanna, I actually wanna lay hands on everybody tonight. Can we do that tonight? Can we have a party tonight? Is that okay? Here's my word, because I know for some of us, I know Bill, you guys have to go to Calgary tonight, so I do understand if, if you can't, but, uh, I do wanna say this, I believe in the power of impartation. I believe that God is bringing back the laying on of hands in this season. And how many agree with me that tonight God wants to give us a gift, amen? Listen, if you've got your Bibles really quickly, I just wanna, I wanna share this quick word and then I wanna lay hands on people tonight. I want you to look at 2 Timothy chapter one. And I want to talk really briefly about the power of impartation. This is something that has marked me because here's what the Lord spoke to me. He said, Sammy, there's a distinction coming in this next season between those who operate out of gifts and those who operate out of inheritance. How many believe it's time to operate out of inheritance? He said, orphans look for gifts. He said, but sons and daughters 
look for inheritance. And he said, Sammy, tonight, I want to give you an inheritance. I want to give you a gift tonight. I want to impart to you something significant out of the place of sonship that you have more than what you think. How many say amen? amen. No, and I was reminded probably a few months ago, the Lord started to speak to me this word about inheritance and impartation. And I've been in many impartation services. And I remember I was in San Francisco at a church. And as I'm ministering, the Lord speaks to me and says, Sammy, tonight, I want you to activate the impartation of John Paul Jackson. I remember John Paul Jackson. We saw a video of John Paul Jackson this weekend. And I was like, God, the impartation of John, like John Paul Jackson. I'm like, I don't have that anointing. God says, yes, you do. I'm like, no, I don't. You ever had those conversations with the Lord? I'm like, God, when did that happen? And I'm preaching and God's speaking this to me. And I said, what's going to happen? He said, Sammy, tonight, you're going to move in words of knowledge, but you're going to call people's dreams out and interpret their dreams. I said, what? He said, you're going to look at people, call out their dreams, and you're going to interpret them. I said, God, I, I've never read a John Paul Jackson book. I've never went through a school. I can't do that. God says, yes, you can. How many of that's an interesting conversation? Here's what the Lord told me. You have more than what you think. But the problem is you doubt impartation. Can I say this today? I want to bring faith today that you have more than what you think and that you carry impartation tonight. And all of a sudden, I said, God, when did I get an impartation? God brought me to the day. John Paul Jackson was in Red Deer, Alberta, and he was speaking to a whole group of young people, probably 20 of us after a service. And here's what he said, the anointing that is on me, God, let it come on them. Now, I'll be honest with you. I said, God, I remember that, but that's kind of a generic prayer. Like I was looking for the moment. I'm like, he's never stood me up and prophesied. And here's what the Lord told me. He said, Sammy, here's your problem. You're looking for the spectacular that you miss the supernatural. See, you pick something up from Catherine Coleman. You receive something, Bill, an impartation. And sometimes I feel like for moments we're looking for the man or woman of God to stand us up and to read our mail and to do all these things. But you know what the Lord is looking for? Willing vessels. He's looking for willing vessels to say, God, I thank you that when I'm in a room like this with different men and women of God, Lord, I thank you. I'm not coming just to hear a message. I'm not coming to hear someone preach. I'm coming to pick something up that I'm going to receive something from heaven. I'm going to bring it back. So I said, okay, God. I said, how do I activate this? He said, tonight you're going to move in that. And I said, okay. I remember I said, okay, Lord, I, I, Lord, I thank you for that impartation. All of a sudden, I looked at a guy. He was on the front row. And I, and I knew he had a dream. I said, sir, you just had a dream a couple days ago. He goes, yes, I did. I said, let me tell you your dream. He goes, okay. I said, you had a dream that you were in a convertible vehicle. He goes, yes, I did. How'd you know that? I'm like, the Lord showed me. But in my head, I'm going, God, this is crazy. And I go, you weren't driving the vehicle, were you? He goes, no, I wasn't. You were in the passenger seat. He's like, yes, I was. And I said, the person that was driving the vehicle was your father. He starts to cry. And I go, and all of a sudden it came out of me. I go, and by the way, I said, it was so significant because your dad died three months ago. Guy starts bawling. I said, the Lord wants you to know he gave you this dream because he said, you did lose an earthly father. But God wants you to know that he's your heavenly father. And that you're not in this right of life alone. But the father is driving the vehicle and everything's going to be okay. And the trauma and the grief of loss, God's going to heal you. And in one moment, that man was completely, totally healed of the grief of loss. I saw that family a year later. That man's wife came up to me, gave me a massive hug and said, Sammy, I got my husband back after that word. I said, God, what is this? He said, it's the power of impartation. That's why what you're doing, Jacob, I so believe in. The Timothy conference is so needed. How many believe we need mothers and fathers and sons and daughters to walk together in this season more now than ever? How many say amen? But I want you to look at something 
Because God started to speak to me about impartation. And if you look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, I know you've wrote, written a book on this, Jacob, and you've probably talked about these scriptures. I want to start in verse 2. Look at this. Paul is talking to Timothy. And he says to Timothy, a beloved son. Say beloved son. How many know today you're God's kids and he loves you tonight? And I love this to Timothy, a beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace. Look at this. From God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord, I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience as my forefathers did as without ceasing. I remember you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears that I might be filled with joy. Now look at this. When I call to remembrance, someone say remembrance. How many know there's a power in remembering? You know what I want to do tonight? I want to remind you. How many Dominion conferences has there been? 20? At least 20? I want to remind you today, friends, that we're at here at a Dominion conference and there's been over 20 of these. And how many believe tonight that we're going to receive an inheritance and an impartation, not just of what God's doing now, but how many believe there's been over 20 years over that in this ministry of miracles, signs, and wonders that God has been moving through this ministry? I want to bring to remembrance all those years. I look at Bill, how many years in ministry? 57 years. You've seen a few things. I want to call to remembrance the anointing that's in the room tonight. How many believe when people lay hands on you, that's not just a good feeling, but when people lay hands on you, there's a spiritual inheritance of the years that have been sowed. And how many believe tonight you can be a recipient of that? And Paul's going, I want to bring to the remembrance the genuine faith that is in you. Look at this, which dwelt first. Someone say first which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice and I am persuaded say persuaded I am persuaded it is in you also what is Paul saying Timothy I want you to get something I know it can be hard I know that you want to see me I know that you're in a situation that might feel bigger than what you feel like you have. But I want to remind you, Timothy, that there was a faith that started in your grandmother and I saw it in your mother and I am persuaded that it's in you. I want to remind you something today. Come on, somebody. Listen, lock in with me right now. I want to lock in with you, right? I am persuaded that the anointing of the Holy Ghost is in this room. And I want to remind you of the God that you serve today. I want to remind you today, the same God that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives inside of you. I want to remind you today that Canada's days, its best days are ahead of us, not behind us. You know why we need conferences? Because sometimes you got to be persuaded by the preacher to say, listen, this is not a time to play it safe. This is a time to be persuaded by heaven. I'm persuaded that Canada is being saved. Anybody else persuaded today that our nation is being changed? Anybody here today persuaded that something is shifting this week and I am persuaded that God's not done with Canada. I'm persuaded that God's not done with you. Because I called a remembrance. What's tomorrow? Canada Day. Dominion Day, come on. I'm persuaded. See, there's a moment in your life, I don't care who you are, if you want to do anything for God, you've got to be persuaded. There comes a point in the to life, listen, there comes a point in life where your parents, your pastor, your leader, they can be persuaded, but God's looking at you tonight and he's saying, are you persuaded? 
Are you believing God? Are you still believing that the revival is still available for the church in Canada? Are you still believing that as for me and my house, they will serve the Lord? Are you still believing today that God, when I leave these doors, I know, I know that I know that I know that you've given me something that I'm going to take out and I'm going to see the world around me changed. Are you persuaded tonight? See, some of us were looking for another prophetic confirmation. Can I give you this word tonight? You don't need another prophetic confirmation. At some point, you just got to believe the word of the Lord. Come on, somebody. At some point, we don't need a prophet to stand up here and just prophesy God's going to move in Canada. We need men and women that are persuaded that the God of revival lives in this nation. That's why I... This row right here, Dick and Joan, you know why I come back? Because they were persuaded when they saw me at 17 years old. Knew nothing about nothing. Just got into ministry with my dad. Never thought I would do this. Are you kidding me? I was a basketball player. Never thought I would be a preacher. I was the kid in church that did all the bad things. When we would do communion, I gotta tell you, Bill, when we would do communion, my best friend was the pastor's kid. We used to sneak downstairs into the church kitchen and communion always had the best grape juice. It was always Welch's. Like if the church was gonna spend back there, it was always on communion. So you know what I did? My dad was a, an elder in the church. So we would go downstairs during worship. Bill, back then they had the big gold tins. We took it over and there was all the cups. So guess what me and my buddy did? We drank them all. <laughs> Every last one. And we just put the lid back on. So when my dad and my pastor did communion and they lifted the lid for the bread, the bread was there. But when they lifted the, the lid for the juice, gone. You ever had a drink juice by faith? I never thought I would do this. But I was persuaded. This is why we need mothers and fathers. I want to tell you this today right now. Some of us, we've given up too quickly on the generations working together. God wants to restore it in this next season. And I know it's hard. But boy, do we need it more now than ever. We need a revival, not just of young. We need the generations walking together because the truth is, if you have breath in your lungs, you are a part of this generation. Because the truth is, a 17-year-old kid needed a dick to work to see something in me that I didn't see in myself. Spoke and prophesied over me that I'd go around the world and I'd do stuff with athletes and see thousands saved and it's happening. It's happening. Renting stadiums and seeing God move and, and working with professional athletes. It all came because somebody saw something in me I couldn't see in myself and they were persuaded. Bill Prankert. Others in this room, I want to tell you something today. That anointing is costly. I look at our friends that are doing stuff in Thailand. I look at different ministers in here. Friends, I want to tell you this. You should be so hungry and say, God, I just thank you. I, I want that impartation. I want that inheritance. I want to walk in this because Canada is being saved. But here's the deal. If you're not persuaded, you'll never think what you have is enough. You'll never really think, well, I, I, you know, what can I do with Canada? Canada's so big. Who am I, God? I'm just, you know, somebody from somewhere. And it's like, God, I, does anybody care? I want to tell you this. Heaven is looking at this meeting tonight, and it's looking for people that are persuaded. Saying, God, if you want to use somebody, here I am right here in Lethbridge. Come on, I don't care where you're from. I don't care if you're from a tiny town in Manitoba. God's going to use you and set a nation on fire. I don't care. Listen, I don't care what the background is because we know the author. Whew. 
I am persuaded is in you also. Therefore, someone say therefore. I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Why is hands laid so important? Here's what the Lord told me. He said, Sammy, there's a gift of impartation that when it's from the Lord and they lay hands on you, you receive what they toiled for over all those years. And all of a sudden now, we have the blessing where their ceiling becomes your floor. You know what Paul's saying to Timothy? Paul's saying to Timothy, Timothy, I know it's hard. I know it's tough, but I want to tell you something. I know that you carry the same faith, that same generational faith that was in your grandmother, in your mother. I'm persuaded it is in you, and I'm reminding you to stir up the gift in you. Timothy, I'm reminding you, I laid hands on you and something happened. It wasn't a goosebump. It wasn't a feeling. There was a supernatural download from heaven. See, the devil would try to tell you that impartation is not significant. Friends, I want to tell you this. The devil is terrified of impartation because he knows the blessing that is on the seed. And when you receive that which has been, listen, some people that have toiled for years, we have the privilege of receiving. Come on, somebody. How many want to step into that level of acceleration tonight? You're saying, God, I don't know. Maybe I don't know what it looks like, but God, I want it. Lord, I, maybe I've never prophesied, but when Sammy lays my hands, I'm going to prophesy in this season. I'm going to move in miracles. When I look at Dick and Joan, and I see them, I go, God, I want the faith to believe God for a building. $3.2 million. Three, sorry, sorry, 3.8. Sorry, corrected. Here's what I want to say. Pioneers in Christian broadcast, there would not be the same thing without Dick and Joan Dorr. Do you get this tonight? They're, that They pioneered something that had never been done in Canada. People try to tell them that it couldn't be done, but they broke through. They pressed through. Friends, I want to tell you this. That breaker anointing that is on them, God wants to put it on you. Dear God, do we need it? I'm thinking, Lord, we got buildings to buy. Some of the events that we do are massive. You guys just finished one. 450,000, some of these events, $450,000. Can I tell you, revival's expensive. And it needs people of faith. Oh, sorry, sorry, not 450, 700,000. Paid for. How many want that kind of faith? How many want the same kind of faith? I've been with Bill. I've shared this story in the green room. One of the most impactful stories. Just really quickly, I want to share this. We had a Canadian oil, and some of you, maybe you're at Canadian oil, Lethbridge. We also had Canadian oil in Calgary. Bill Prankard was speaking. And he saw a little girl. That long story short, she may be, what, five or six, maybe? She fell from a second story building. She hit her head. And the brain damage that took place, she could not walk on her own. She needed assistance. And Bill looked at this little girl and he started to pray. And I saw a little girl that was wheelchair bound. All of a sudden she started to have a, I, I still see the smile, Bill. And we got her out of that chair and you walked her up and down the sanctuary of Craig Broker's church, Southside Victory in Calgary, and a little girl with the biggest expression of joy. Can I tell you this? Her body was set free completely. She started to walk with no assistance. It's like looking at the face of an angel. I was looking, I was like, all the pain gone. Every person in that room goes, I don't care if you thought you were an atheist. Guess what? It's, it's not hard to fish when God throws a stick of dynamite in the water. That's, 
It's the dunamis power of God. How many are ready to see your family members get saved? Because why? Because you're about to see notable miracles in this season. We just got the rest of the testimony from that little girl. Oh, that little girl that was completely, totally healed and walking. The mother said, I want to testify to you. She said, that girl wasn't just healed and walking, but all the brain damage that caused her not to be able to learn the right way. They took her out of school. They said, you'll never be able to go to school again. God healed all the memory. God healed the brain completely. And she just finished elementary school. I want to remind you the candidate is being saved I want to remind you tonight and I'm persuaded that our best days are ahead of us and not behind us and God has put you on this earth for such a time as this and you have more than what you think and here's what the Lord said. He said, in this next season, I'm going to remind you of the different people that have laid hands on you. He said, you're going to tap into that anointing. I'm telling you, it's a key in this next season. Some of you go, I don't know what to do. You know what the Lord told me? He said, that impartation is an anointing that you can access when you need it. So times that you go, God, like when the Lord said, you've got the anointing, like John Paul Jackson, I go, God, what do I do? He said, you're going to start to interpret people's dreams. He said, that anointing is available for you when you need it. And all of a sudden, when you step in by faith, it starts to access. How many want to move in the prophetic that way, move in miracles that way? Friends, I'm telling you right now, you have more than what you think. Why? Because Canada is being saved. Not just by a few. God is anointing his church for such a time as this. And he's anointing you. And I'm persuaded that when we lay hands on you, how many believe that anointing's coming on you? You might feel like I've never done, I've never ministered in healing. There's people in this room that have had 20, 30, 40, 50 years of healing ministry. Guess what? That impartation's coming over you. And guess what's going to happen? All of a sudden, you're going to accelerate in healing. You're going to get words of knowledge. You're going to start to prophesy. You're going to start to move in different things that you've never moved in. Why? Because the power of impartation. Why does it happen? Because you today are a beloved child of God. How many say amen? How many want that tonight? Put up your hands. You're saying, God, I want this tonight. Listen. Here's how impartation works. And I don't have enough time to get into it because I don't want to go all night. But here's how impartation works. Impartation is a gift. You have to choose to receive it. I can't stuff it in your pocket. You have to receive it tonight. And God wants to give it to you tonight. And I guarantee you, if there's one thing I can say is this. If you come here by faith, saying, God, I want everything that you have, I can promise you this. You will receive something from heaven tonight and you will not be the same. And when you go back to your workplace, when you go back home, when you go back to your church, I'm going to tell you this, that impartation is going to start to come alive inside of you. And all of a sudden, there's going to be things that you've never done before. You're going to get bolder in this season. You're going to get more prophetic and you're going to see more miracles. Why? Because God is using you for what I believe is going to be the greatest move Canada and the world has ever seen. How many say amen? amen? If you want that tonight, I want you to stand up all over this room. Ooh. Now, I haven't asked anybody. Oh, Pastor Dick? Yeah, well, you're going to, uh, sorry, you're going to do uh, a prayer line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or, or a tunnel or something. Yes, a, tunnel. Yeah, a tunnel. So I just need to let you know that when you come and get your prayer, you can go into the lobby because you know what? We have cake. We have cake? We have cake. So it's, you get a gift it's Canada and Day, cake. And it's a, a cake to party and celebrate Canada Day. Can I just say right now, it sounds like everybody gets a birthday tonight. That's what I'm just feeling. So can we do something? Is the worship team here? Can we have a, how we know tonight, 
Tonight's not a funeral night. How many believe tonight is a party night? And that we're going to come through this in thanksgiving and faith, and we're going to lay hands. I know I haven't talked. I don't know, Bill, if you can or not. But, uh, yes. When I came, I had a sprained ankle. Yeah. I just had x-rays and stuff because it was so painful. And so, you know, I wondered about coming. Well, I don't have it anymore. Come I'm just sitting this here to tell you. Come on. So here's what we're going to do. So when they go through the line. We're going to go through the line. So when you go through the line. Then they can go get cake. They can go get cake. But I'm hoping we does get it, a, Does it get better than that? I don't think so. No, there you go. So I don't know if there's some ministry friends. If we can, I don't know. If you, are you guys, why don't you guys come forward? Dick and Joan, come forward. Some of our friends here, come forward. Come, come, come here. So here's what's going to happen. We are going to get in a tunnel. So we're going to turn. We're going to have half on this side, half on this side. And here's what's going to happen. We're going to start with this section of people. So guys, why don't you come forward? If you want prayer tonight, I want you to line up right here. Quick, 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 quick. Right here. Whoa, whoa, don't go through. Hey, 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 hey. Do we have ushers? Ushers and catchers. Perfect. Guys, if people bail, you drag them out. They can still get cake. But we're going to try to get this line quick. Here's the thing, guys. Don't stop and wait. This is not a prophecy line. This is an impartation line. And when you go through, I want you to believe. I want you to believe tonight you're going to receive all these anointings that are here right now. So, guys, let's lift up our hands all over this room. Lord, we thank you for the anointing. We thank you for the impartation. Lord, we thank you that tonight is a party night. And so we're going through, and Lord, we thank you that we're being changed, and Canada is being saved. How many say amen? Yeah. Awesome, let's go. Hey.